you so much for tuning in to First Times. I'm your host, Tasha Jones. The show is about talking about your first time having sex. And it's going to be funny, it's going to be serious, and it's going to be educational. Uh, the guests that I have on are just going to tell their story in their own words. So let's start. My first guest is Adam. Hi, Tasha. Hello, Adam. So why don't you tell us your story of your first time you had sex? Sure. Um, I remember it must have been the dead of August or whatever because uh, we could have been outside, but we were in my aunt's basement because of the air conditioning. And um, this had been my girlfriend. I was 16. She was 16 as well. This had been my grade 10 sweetheart. We'd been together for about six months, and we'd been building up to something really special, like you know, going all the way for a really long time. So this time, for whatever reason, was the time we decided to go for it. And um, it was, uh, well, really awkward, I guess. Um, I was worried about hurting her, and she was worried about being hurt. And we really was, were just worried about doing the right thing and, and what to do. So um, it was really awkward, but um, we, we figured it out, right, as humans do, I guess. And, uh, and it was pretty much right at the moment that we figured it out that my aunt came downstairs. I don't know, it must have been with, like, Tang and Rice Krispie Squares or something, just, just, just being nosy, right? But she caught us right in the middle of our first time, so um, it was, uh, I guess, a bit of coitus interruptus. But uh, other than that, it was, um, it was really special for me because it kind of started uh, the relationship um, that lasted. I think the longest, it was the longest relationship I had, and it was really beautiful. I've um, been with her for ten years after that, based on the emotions that we built that day. So, how far into the actual sex did you get before you got caught? Um, about halfway. No, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> it would have been, uh, the th we, were, we, were, we were playing, we were making out, we were, we were, I, I don't know, my aunt must have had like ESP to know because like, it was about 10, 20 seconds into actual intercourse, but we had been playing for a couple of hours before that, so I mean it depends on from where you start, but uh, we didn't get very far to be honest with you. So you got blue balls that day? Yeah, absolutely. You know, but at that point, it wasn't anything new because I didn't know what not having blue balls was like. True. So why don't you tell us about the first time you actually got to complete and actually have sex? Okay. Yeah, it would have been the time after that we made sure that nobody was home. <laughs> and um, that was a lot slower, a lot more romantic. Um, we had basically gotten... We just rolled our top for some nice wine at the LCBO, so we had that for us. And um, yeah, it was it was pretty idyllic. It was really nice. Um, yeah, so I guess the one thing that I can say that I didn't expect was um, well, I <laughs> I don't know how to say that. I got I got in a little bit, and then I felt like there was some resistance. And um, what I didn't know about was that there was like kind of a breaking point where you know, you had to, you know, kind of push a little bit, and that hurt her a lot, and we cuddled a lot after, like, right after that, just trying to figure out what happened, and then going from there, it was, uh, it was, a, it was kind of a romantic scene. So was this her first time as well? Yeah, absolutely. So you guys had your first time together, and then you guys were together for 10 years after that. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty significant. How did you find the sex throughout the 10 years develop from that first time like did you what was the differences I mean other than getting to know each other well we were able to help each other find our sexual identities in, in a really important way because um, without her I wouldn't really have had the experience to know that in bed I'm naturally a dominant person for example um, she um, at first had to lead because it was only kind of impeded by her limitation. Like I, I didn't want to hurt her, so I like. But at the same time, I was 16. I was a horny kid, so I was going for it. But she'd stop me whenever I was going too fast or whatever. But once uh, we kind of got past the physical limitations of your first and second time, for example, um, we were able to settle into our kind of more sexual rules as uh, you know, dominant versus submissive, for lack of a better way to put it. So when you guys broke up, yeah. what was it like? Like going out and 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 dating and trying to meet another partner to have sex with how like when you finally did meet a partner to have sex with what was the comparison like for that first time well i'll tell you i was a, i was a babe in the woods you know because um first of all the whole uh process of finding a partner is something that you learn when you're 17 18 19 and for the most part but i was 
26 when I was going out learning the lessons of an 18 year old. So I was a babe in the woods and uh, basically um, for two years or so after that I was a, I was a pretty big slut. I was uh, trying to find who I was interested in and, and what I liked so I was uh, interacting I guess you could say with a, a wide variety of individuals trying to find somebody who would be as compatible. So you say you're a dominant person in bed. What exactly do you mean by that? Well, um, ultimately underneath, I would call myself a giver. But um, when you're, I found early on, and it was part of that same sexual exploration after uh, C, uh, that, um, that I found that you know, stopping to ask if you like this, for example, is uh, definitely not a turn on. So what? <laughs> Right, so um, I eventually came to rely on my sexual intuition and, and just do, and, uh, and I found that met, you know, with the best results for my partner. So, um, you know, I just go and, and, and I assess too, because like you can feel a, a woman's body tense up if she doesn't like it, or you can see the look on her face or the noises that she makes. So I just do what I like, I have fun, and uh, most of the time, I guess my partners have fun with me. Well, that's the most important thing. So with other people out there that are in the same position as you are, right. do you have any suggestions for them? Well, absolutely, and I think that my experiences are a good example of um, you know, following your intuition, following your gut, because it's only when you second guess yourself that you find yourself in a position of awkwardness. And, and really, that's the, that's the biggest pitfall of those who are engaging in sex for the first time is the awkwardness or like the stigma. Um, Honest to God, alcohol helps to kind of <laughs> <laughs> to remove some of the, uh, the the preconceived notions about sex if you haven't had it, you know, if you haven't had it. So um, do whatever you got to do to relax, whether it be uh, bubble baths and, and tea lights or uh, you know a, a magnum of, of of wine, you know. Well, speaking honestly of alcohol, I don't think I've ever been drunk or been slutty in places, but <coughs> alcohol definitely does help. So I kind of like it. Yeah. A lot. Well, we're on the same page on that, Tasha. I like the, the alcohol. So, well, thank you so much for sharing your story. It's my pleasure. It means a lot. And I think that a lot of people are probably going to be in the same boat as you when it comes to first times having sex. So, tune in next time when we have a new guest, a new story. And I'm not so uncomfortable and actually know what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> thank you.